Okay, hello everyone, this is Mr. Rob Ronan here again, and today I've got news. And I don't think it's going to be news for anyone except myself. But Demon Slayer Hinokami Chronicles has just gotten a shadow update. A secret little, little drop of update. And it's not just one of those stupid updates they do like every two weeks or so where they fix bugs or something. There was actual balance changes in this update. And for some reason, I did not know about it. I guess it's, I bet it has something to do with how volatile algorithms and recommended feeds are these days. Like if I don't watch a Hinokami Chronicles video for like three days, Muto said that is out. I guess you hate this game or something because we're never recommending it to you again, which is awful. Because <laughs> now I miss this like huge news of this game that everyone's complaining is dead, got an update. And just, I had zero news about it, except for this one, this one person commented on this 2020 review thing I posted. He said, yeah, it's literally 50% off right now and it just got updated. Which like, yeah, if anyone still hasn't bought the game, now's the time. But what? How did I not hear about this except for just some random dude mentioning it in one of my comments? Are you kidding me? <laughs> but, so yes, today we're going to be talking about the update and going over the actual balance changes. And I have read through them, so it's not going to be like a reaction or anything. But we're just going to kind of go through the changes. And um, there's not too many, so we'll be able to go through it. It won't take too long. And... Uh, yeah, talk about kind of what it means for each character and just I'll, a little bit of a foreword before we actually get into it. I will say, although this is really, really exciting in prospect, just the idea that there was an update for this game and like an actual update, not just like putting in DLC, like they're actually willing to change the balance of the game, actually give some love and hope and life into this game is really, really cool. But unfortunately, it still leaves me a slight bit disappointed just because of uh, how bare bones and random it is. I, I didn't, I'm just saying that I need to see more to be actually convinced that they are trying to do something with this game. Of course, there's also the speculation that they're trying to revive it and get ready to put new DLC and like bring some life into the game for the Swordsmith Village um, arc coming up which, you know, will become super popular thanks to the anime, hopefully. But if you've looked through these patch notes, like, not only are they kind of short, but it kind of feels like, I don't know, like kind of band-aid changes. It feels like they just got someone, they were like, oh, people are asking for a balance patch for our game. And they just like hired some random gamer to pick up the game for the first time, try out every character and be like, can you just make one change for each character, please? Like, they said they want some balance changes. Like, what do you think they should do? And the person picks up a character and they're like, oh, um, I guess she can uh, um, cancel after her this tool because it's kind of weird that it does little damage. So now she can use it to extend combos. And then that's it. So the changes are kind of a bit small and random. And also, I feel like if they were really... If it was the proper designers of the game and stuff that really built the mechanics and stuff, they would have had changes that affect a lot more of the core of the game and like a lot of the core problems of the game. Like things like supports and stuff, where so many people have suggested changes that would be super easy to implement. You don't have to redesign the whole system. Like people say, just make it so if you hit a support when they're out, they lose both of their bars or they take longer to come back or something. So then if the opponent does some crazy offense and you DP and you hit them and their support, well, then they have to, you know, wait longer before they use the support again. And it adds just a little bit of more counterplay against supports. But they didn't change any of the stupid stuff with, like, supports and, like, a bunch of other things that people really have simple fixes to. They were just like, nah, let's just do some random stuff. And, like, some of the changes, like, um, off, ac after activating the surge, you can't like block instantly which is like cool that that does make sense so that is kind of a weird thing about the game but this game has a lot of weird things and it has a lot more important weird things that i think should have been addressed first so yeah just these first universal changes before we get into the characters so yeah like this one links in the window during which you can guard following the animation upon activating surge so it's kind of just like if you activate surge you, you can't like instantly block or instantly go into like being safe kind of so if something is about to hit you you're not just like able to activate surge like it's a zero frame move 
super armor. They just made it so it's easy to see on some characters where they like barely glue white around the edges. Now they're going to be more bright. And then we've got our character specific changes. So clearly we are going to start with Tanjiro. And as you can see here, all the changes to Slayers who have the alternate skins that are kind of separate characters, like the Kimetsu Academy Tanjiro, who is literally the exact same character except for the ultimate activation, the balance changes apply to both of them. So for Tanjiro, shorten the recovery time after landing when using skill three. So that is his DP, his invincible, his whirlpool, I mean, yeah, his spinning whirlpool, and the opponent will also be knocked further back if they guard it. And this is a pretty common change. We'll see this with a few slayers, so let's just show visually and so we understand it pretty well. So the change is to this DP whirlpool attack. So re decreasing the recovery overall just means that you can do whatever you want after the move earlier. So that means either on hit or on block, it's better. So uh, if it was on hit, let me just get him to be hit, or even like on whiff. So as you can see, when I do it, he can block a lot earlier than he used to be able to. So if I just, I can replicate what it would have looked like before. So in that kind of like animation where he's kind of crouched down like that, and then he would block like at that time. But now you can see he can block a lot earlier, kind of he only crouches for like a quarter of a second and then you can instantly block. So now you can kind of, if you whiff it in neutral, it's gonna be a bit harder for the opponent to punish. Still definitely punishable, but not as ridiculous as before. That means on hit, you might have like better time to chase them down and get some like meaty attacks or something like that, where you would usually just be stuck standing for a lot longer than have to wait before you can dash in. Now you can do it a lot earlier. And that also means that on guard, it's a little bit safer. And when you combine this with the other change that it pushes the opponent further back on guard, you can see that I recover a bit faster and I'm pushed a decent amount further away where a regular attack won't be able to hit. Usually when you blocked the whirlpool, it like didn't push the opponent away at all. So he'd be standing here. So if the opponent blocks it, they can just mash super easily and get a punish. Now it kind of works like the entertainment district Tanjiro where you get pushed to around this distance. So if the opponent blocks it and then tries to mash, they might whiff the first two attacks of their attack string and you'll be able to block in time and actually be safe if the opponent doesn't know how to punish you correctly. So ultimately, it is still a punishable move because it is your invincible reversal, but it just makes it so the opponent has to put a little bit, teensy bit more thought and effort into going to punish you than just mashing buttons as soon as they notice that they block it. Which, you know, is cool, but nothing crazy. And just make sure you keep like this, this in mind because we'll see this with a few slayers. So when they say it pushes the opponent further away, obviously it pushes them further away and less recovery means that I can block or do whatever earlier. So ultimately, Order Tanjiro, not too many changes. It's not really going to change too much. Maybe you'll get away with landing a Whirlpool safely. Now for Hinokami Tanjiro, you've, they have lengthened the combo timer when repeating input on skill three Phoenix Flash. So this means that when he does, when you press the button twice for your skill three, so your guard skill, which is this big unblockable circle, They've increased the amount of combo time, which, if you are a player of Hinokami Chronicles, you know that that means that it has gone from a red combo to a yellow combo. What the actual hell? I have no idea where this change came from. I guess they thought that Hinokami Tanjiro was, you know, kind of suffering and didn't have strong enough mix-ups. I feel like this was enough of a scrub killer, but now it's a scrub killer that not only is like a knowledge check, it's actually like a really valuable way of getting damage because <laughs> it gets just a longer combo. That's literally all the changes. A lot of the changes are going to be like this. It's just one little thing that is stronger or weaker. And yeah, now his Phoenix Flash, it used to start a red combo, which, you know, like his Dive Kick or something is a red combo where, you know, he wouldn't get too much, just maybe a full attack string into this, get a nice little chunk of damage. But now he's just actually just going for a proper combo. I haven't played Hinokami Tanjiro in a while, actually, so I don't remember what his combos are at all. But I think he could... Well, actually, he can't do that anymore. But I'm sure anyone that's played Hinokami Tanjiro for a little longer than I have will know that this is a really fun change. So that's pretty crazy. Now, anytime you can go for stuff like this and you go for some kind of unblockable setup, 
As long as this hits first and it's not your support, like maybe it's probably on block. Starts a yellow combo. Crazy stuff. And now with the Slayer version of Nezuko, or her Kimetsu Academy outfit version, there is a few more changes, more than just one. So reduce the size of the hitbox for her heel bash. So, you know, that's her flip kick. It just means that it won't have such a ginormous explosion of a hitbox. So you have a better chance of dodging out of the way or jumping out of the way, and you won't just get clipped from anywhere, which is really good. That move was crazy. People complained about it. And I think that's also something that people nerfed in the the fan updates, like whatever they call, like the Water, Water Chronicles fan version of the game, whatever that is. Also, they improved the ease of performing emergency escape when hit by the her DP flying kick skill three guard special, whatever you call it. So just it was kind of weird how it worked because it did have a follow up uh, animation, so you couldn't really escape out of it after she did it. So she kind of got a free knockdown, and now the opponent can actually break away from it. And it also just deals more damage for some reason when she does the. Uh, animation version, which is a little bit ridiculous because it was already a super, super, whoopsie, a super damaging combo ender, and now it's just more so, like, okay, cool, and also, this version is pretty similar, the opponent just can't break out of it, and the flip kick, just, the animation is the exact same, but just some of the, the particle effects. Basically, when you saw this move, every particle effect that was on the screen was somehow part of the attack and part of the hitbox. And now it's mainly just where she actually goes down with her heel. So the opponent can actually like try to like dodge out of the way or just jump out of the way or do anything and not just get instantly hit by it. Which is good because it was pretty ridiculous. And that's all for Nezuko. Kind of just some like little weird adjustments to things that were a little bit too strong. But... Balance is balance. Now, for Zenitsu with both skins, he his damage for his throw is actually increased, but they uh, also increased or lengthened the recovery time for when it misses. So just a change to his throw, which was one of his most powerful things. Now, how much more damage? Oh, that's actually kind of noticeable. I'm pretty sure it was, I think there's only three tiers of throw damage in the game and his was in the low. And now it looks like it's about medium. Yeah, on par with regular Inos case. So that's cool. And also they adjusted it so he used to recover like completely instantly. And now you can see that it kind of acts more like a normal grab. And he does actually have some recovery. He can't just mash it over and over again. He does have to wait for a moment so the opponent can actually punish him. But I thought when I read this the first time that this would mean that they increased the recovery um, when it hits as well. Which would not be good, because one of the best things about this throw is that when he lands it, he gets a super long knockdown and can build back a ton of meter, but he can still do that. So don't worry, it's still a great throw, now it's just not so abusably safe. And it does more damage, so honestly, it's kind of a win-win if you weren't an abuser. And for regular Inosuke's, he kind of got the Water Tanjiro change that I mentioned before. They shortened the recovery time of his guard special DP when it is landed or guarded, and the opponent will be knocked further away. So if I hit Sabuto with this, you know, oh, it actually seems like there's still a decent amount of recovery on it. Let me actually not hit him with it. Oh, okay, it's impossible to. Yeah, there's still a decent amount of recovery. I was kind of hoping that it would be a bit more plus because there was a problem when you were in the corner. Sometimes you would be so negative that you could actually be punished when you land it and they wake up near you, but now I don't think that is going to happen. It still seems like it has a decent amount of recovery. So it's not great, but at least, yeah, okay, you're not going to be able to be punished for landing it in the corner. And on guard, of course, it's not going to be safe, but it's just, I suppose, going to be a little bit harder to punish. Yeah, the opponent is pushed back, not as far as Water Tanjiro was pushed back, but I think... Wait, what kind of distance is that? Yep, so it's out of distance of a regular attack, so they do have to do, like, a tilt attack to actually hit you from there. But, yeah, it's still got a decent amount of recovery, and certainly more than Water Tanjiro's does. So, not as good of a change to the DP as Water Tanjiro got, but it's still... 
a slight teensy bit safer and maybe you won't get punished for using it near the wall. <laughs> now, Rokodaki actually got some nerfs. The first one is a buff to his standing skill one, like his waterfall, where apparently it just makes it easier to hit and the second hit is easier to land. So I guess it'll just make it so it doesn't accidentally whiff on the opponent occasionally when they're at certain heights or things. Um, and then he gets punished for it for slightly timing it incorrectly. But they made a few, quite a few adjustments to his traps, so they shortened the time where an opponent is stunned after triggering a trap placed by skill 3. The max number of traps has also been reduced from 3 to 2, and the duration of the traps has been shortened. So there's actually three changes in this text that make the traps worse. So they don't like launch the opponent into the air for as long, because they used to be floated in the air for quite a while, which was handy because then you can super easily hit confirm and dash in and get a combo. And now he can only place two of them at a time and they will disappear faster. So let's see what this all looks like. I'm not quite sure how to test the changes to the skill one waterfall, because I don't really remember what exactly the combos are with Rokodaki where it would have missed. Okay, well then the first hit missed. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe there were some situations, like maybe even on block, where it, the opponent could have escaped from it or something, but they're just trying to say that there shouldn't be any glitches where somehow it whiffs incorrectly. And then with the traps... Oh, okay, they're going to lag my game somehow. But I place them on the screen, and I've got one there, one back here, and if I place another one over here to kind of surround the opponent, yeah, that one disappears. So only two on the screen, and let's see how long it takes for them to disappear. Actually, that was kind of hard to tell. So place it around. Okay, it's still pretty long. It's more likely that they're going to be deleted from the opponent, just deleting them with a special move for some reason, which the opponent can do. So that change isn't going to make too much of a difference, but let's see what it's also like on hit. Did it always use to start a red combo? Maybe that's what it meant. Because it still seems like it launches them pretty high, and it's pretty easy to hit them still. No, it says shorten the time where the opponent is stunned. But I didn't think it used to start a red combo. But anyways, if it is a change to the stun, it doesn't seem too drastic. And the duration doesn't seem too drastic. But 3 to 2 is kind of rude. Why would you do that to a Rokodaki? And then with Sabito... They, he actually got quite a few changes, lucky guy. So they buffed his movement and his dash. So basically all of his movement was buffed. So when he's just walking around and also when he's running towards the opponent, they are both faster now because I believe he was pretty. Sl he was in the slow category for both of those. So now he'll be just average. Um, lengthen the guard stun for his skill one when it's used on the ground. Okay, so now it'll work just a bit more like Water Tanjiro's, because you know how when Water Tanjiro does his waterfall, it's pretty damn plus on block. You can just do it over and over and then enter buttons and there's not much the opponent can do about it, so maybe it'll be more plus on block like Water Tanjiro's. Um, improve the ease of landing skill too, so that the second hit is easier to land. Yeah, I, this was a bit of a funky move. Sometimes it whiffs awkwardly, so hopefully it's just better at being consistent now. Improve the ability to lock onto opponents when using skill 2 on the ground. So yeah, once again, just make it more consistent. It doesn't awkwardly not hit the opponent, hopefully. And then he got the classic change we were talking about, where they shorten the recovery of the DP and knock them further away. So, um, on block, this should be... Okay, it still doesn't seem that plus... Certainly not Water Tanjiro Plus. But, you know. Hopefully it's just slightly better. It is slightly noticeably better. It was pretty neutral before. Now it seems like I can actually get a button off before the opponent would be able to hit me. I'm not sure how I'll be able to test this, but hopefully it'll just be more consistent. I could put the CPU to start fighting me, but... I don't really know how I'm going to test its whiff ability. Well, it hit the opponent then, so I guess it's good. <laughs> I literally don't know. It'll just 
would be good if that's more consistent. And what was the other change? Oh yeah, the classic change to the DP. Where... Oh, wow, that was actually a big, big pushback. And what was the recovery like? Okay, so it's got slightly longer recovery, it appears, than Water Tanjiro's, but it's got a significantly more amount of pushback. Which is kind of cool, because this one actually had the least pushback to any of the like DPs in the game before. It left the opponent like right here, just in front of you, barely pushed back at all. But now it like, oh, it seems like they're going to be close, boom, and then they go flying away. So now the opponent can really, like, depending on how their attack string works, they might whiff like the first three attacks of their attack string if they just try to hit you with regular buttons. Actually, I'm not even sure if that distance, if a tilt reaching attack would hit. Whoops, not that kind of tilt. Okay, it still seems like it will. Wait, I keep not getting a tilt attack. <clears throat> Yeah, that was my tilt attack, and it actually didn't hit there, so it might actually be pretty decently difficult to punish. You will have to have, like, specialty punishes for it. Maybe go for, like, a long-reaching special move or a dash-in or something, or maybe you'll have to be a character with long-reaching buttons. But yeah, it seems like his DP might actually be pretty safe, which is kind of good, because now he has these, like, long strings that have a lot of guard break, and if he does mess it up, then it doesn't really matter, because he'll be a little bit safer. And if he does break their guards, then booyah. And let's see what it's like on hit. Can you get midis a little bit, a little bit? Oh yeah, he can dash in. And as you can see, the dash didn't actually hit the opponent. So the dash was over before the opponent was fully woken up. So that's actually even a little bit faster than Water Tanjiro's. Because Water Tanjiro's, the dash hit midi. But now Sabedo can actually get a dash in. And then do what he wants from there. Interesting. Of course, you know, you have other things you can do. Get some aerial attacks, whatever. Cool. Cool changes for Sabito. I hope this buff to his movement... I didn't test that, but... Yeah, I don't really remember how fast he was, but I guess he's faster now. And his dash speed, yeah, is now a regular nice swift dash in. Cool. Good job, Sabito. I hope people don't... Don't drag on you as much now. Now, Makomo certainly is the character with the most changes, which is kind of cool because I think... I don't remember exactly, but she's certainly in the lowest regions of tier lists and one of the characters that people complain the most about being not only weak, but also finicky and glitchy where things just miss or don't work correctly. So it makes sense that she'll get a decent amount of changes. So a special gauge charges more easily. Cool. So she'll just build it faster after using, uh, after using her specials. So more meter is always good. Increase the hitbox size and damage dealt by her light attacks. Cool. So her light attacks, you know, they were pretty small. She didn't have long reaching sword swings or stuff. She's got these little jabs, but now they will like reach further and do some more damage. Great, great. Increased throw damage was, is awesome because she, her character, or at least before this patch was really, really based around getting her damage from going for throw resets. Now, if it does more damage, that's just awesome. Her hitbox comes out earlier for her water surface slash. So I'm intrigued to see how much earlier that is. Does that mean they just sped up the move or is it just a slight like uh, change to the hitbox actually aligning with the visuals? I'm not sure. Skill two, so her water wheel can no longer be canceled with a quick dodge when you complete the entire attack, nor can it be canceled during the forward charge with another skill. Interesting. So that's actually a nerf to her water wheel. She can't cancel it as soon as she does it to make it completely safe. But there are, there's more coming up. When a water wheel on the ground hits the opponent, it can now be cancelled into another skill, aerial attack. Wait, what? Oh yeah, when it hits the opponent, it can be cancelled into a skill or regular attacks in the air. Okay, I thought she could do that before, but whatever. And when a water wheel in the air... Okay, same thing for the aerial one. And increased how much special gauge... She charges when she lands her support skill. Okay, so that's for new user as a support. Okay. So the main changes are she has more meter to deal with. She'll deal more damage and has better regular attacks. Her throw does more damage. This we will test how fast the skill one is. And the skill two 
you can't kind of cancel it as easily as it coming out, it seems, but also they keep saying that when it hits the opponent, it can now be cancelled into other stuff. But I thought it could do that before, but let's see what it looks like in action. So regular attacks. Let's see how much regular attack string does, because it was pretty pathetic before. So anything slightly more... Actually, I don't remember how much the whole attack strings are, but I can tell from these first three hits, these this first strike... It does a significantly more amount of damage. I think that's even more than like a regular character's normal strike. Yeah. It, that's a nice... It used to do a really pathetic amount of damage, so... Having her be able to do these first few hits do a ton of damage, because a lot of her combos just rely on the first few hits. Now they do a decent, decent chunks. I don't remember her combo super well. Okay, clearly. Um, this... Yeah, okay, so I can kind of see what they're talking about with the hitbox coming out earlier. It um The move doesn't look faster, but it feels faster because of when it impacts the opponent. So it kind of had this thing where she does the slash, and it kind of had like a delayed hit. So like the water came out, and then it went shing ku, and the ku was when it hit. Which kind of gave it this really satisfying impact, and it doesn't really have that anymore. But at least it hits earlier, which is technically, you know, a buff, but it just doesn't feel as cool and satisfying. Which is unfortunate, but I'm glad she got a buff anyways. And to this, so... Okay, it seems like she definitely can still cancel it into stuff as it comes out. I'm pretty sure it said can no longer cancel it, right? Not she can now cancel it. <laughs> And they said uh, when it hits, it can now be cancelled into things, but I thought it always used to... Oh no, she would have to get a dash in afterwards. Ah, uh, so now she doesn't have to go for like this, and then the delayed dash in and stuff. She can just go water wheel, instantly into attacks. Okay, that's actually pretty good, because then you can just get combos easier and faster. But the aerial one didn't let me do it, and they said it was the aerial one as well. Am I being lied to? Grounded one... What? The grounded one was yes. Oh no, that puts me into the yes. That was aerial one. So if I go... Yeah, the grounded one I certainly can cancel into my regular attacks, but if I'm in the air, I can't really. And I'm pretty sure you were able to cancel it into specials before as well. So I think that's a bit of a, a lie. Let's just check again. Yeah, it says it can no longer be cancelled with a quick dodge. Oh, when completing the entire attack without hitting the opponent or guarding. Right. So I can cancel it when it's like she's doing the roll. But when she does the spin, I can't cancel that. Okay. So now, it, yeah, it kind of works like a slightly weaker version of Entertainment Tanjiro's where he can cancel it as it comes out, but... After the full... She can even do part of the attack. Like, she can still... Like, you can see the physical hit is out there for a bit, and then I can cancel it still, even when it didn't hit him. It just can't be fully over. And then I cancel it. Interesting. I don't think that'll matter too much. That's actually really good. She can go for this water wheel. Does it work in the air as well? Yeah. So... Wait, let's get really far away. I can do this aerial water wheel, and I can have part of the attack come out, and if I see that it's not actually hitting the opponent, I can't cancel out of it, even if it's not hitting him. Yeah, so the, the physical attack come out that you saw the wheel, but I still cancel it. That's pretty powerful. And now, also on the ground, if I do see that it hits the opponent, I can just go straight into my attacks and go for whatever crappy combo that I don't know how to actually do. <laughs> Interesting. That's really cool. Oh yeah, and now if I go for these... That was not a good throw reset, but now let's see. Okay, it's not a it's not a ton more damage on the throw. Still seems like it's one of the lower damaging throws. But hey, more damage is more damage. And the buff to her regular attacks damage is going to be a blessing as well. And maybe some of the hitbox changes were so that she doesn't awkwardly whiff on stuff. So, cool. Overall... Really good changes for Makomo. I think people are always arguing whether she's like completely the worst or like a secret try hard character that's actually really good. I think this will put her more into just a solid character who can just play the game normally now. 
because it seems like if you knew how to do air combos, she has super easy hit confirms. Her attack strings don't seem to whiff as consistently as they did before. And she's got this super easy to hit confirm water wheel where you can see, oh yeah, it hit the opponent, but I can go for these easy attacks here. Okay, that still whiffs after a short pop-up. But And like the buff to her throw just means the game that she was already playing is just better. So she's just a better version of herself with the added ability of getting some combos a little more easily. She just does more damage and works more consistently, which is what she needed. So cool. Good for you, Makamu. Now, Giyu, he got a buff to his movement and his dash speed. Cool. Uh, shorten the recovery time after his skill one. So, okay, maybe it'll work a little bit more like a like a waterfall, but it'll never really work like a waterfall because it is so long and so many hits and there's gaps in between the, se the last and second last hit. So the opponent still can, like, DP in between it, but I guess making it safer is cool if they happen to block the whole thing. And also, if you use it as a combo ender, shortening the recovery time will mean he can build more meter or set up something or run away earlier as well, which is cool. Combo now can be continued with the light attack after lending his water wheel. Couldn't he literally always do that? Like, that was the point of his water wheel being overpowered. See, I, that's what... These patch notes confuse me. It feels like someone that has never played this game before made these patch notes. Because they're changes, but it's like... Okay, what? Like, this one actually isn't really changed? Can now be continued with a light attack. People always did that. Okay, whatever. Lengthen the counterattack window for skill 3. Okay, so the parry will be active for longer, so maybe if you do it a little bit early and the opponent attacks you a little bit later, it'll still work and you won't get punished for it. Cool? Okay. So I'm not really good at judging movement speed, but yep, if you know how fast he is, usually, well now he's faster. If I get my opponent to block this dragon thing. Okay, it still doesn't seem like it would be plus on block. But I guess maybe on hit, the hard knockdown will be even better. Yeah, okay. It can build back a full bar. But it would already kind of did that. I don't know, it doesn't seem like a huge change to me. Especially if there's still a gap in between the second and last hit. Which, it doesn't seem like they changed. And then this, like, what? No, the wrong character. He could always do this, right? <laughs> Maybe it means it like cancels into the attack and he can do it a little oh, damn it. He can do it a lot early, but no, he kind of he always did this. He always did this. This isn't a change. And then the parry. Oh yeah. That's a decent amount longer. He used to like the whole duration of the move with the like the particles and water effects surrounding him look the exact same, but the amount of time where he's actually got the blue aura on him is certainly longer. It's kind of almost the entire duration of the move. It's as the as the water particles disappear, that's only when he starts to not be parry active. He used to have the parry active only for about half of this duration. So that seems actually pretty, really good. So now you don't have to be as precise with the timing as you would with like this kind of parry. You can just do it, and if the opponent does happen to hit you, cool, you get the parry. That's kind of cool. I like that. Overall, not too many changes, including some fake changes, but Giyu is technically better, and probably the biggest change is just going to be, you know, the little changes to his movement, because everyone loves some faster movement in a game with some pretty annoying zoning, and having a slightly buffed parry is always lovely. Lucky Giyu. Okay, now Shinobu, I actually remember, got some pretty juicy changes. Not too many, but they're pretty cool ones. Special gauge charges more easily, so basically, just like um, with when we talked about Makomo, this kind of means that after she spends meter, you know, there's a different amount of delay between when your build, your meter starts to increase and build again. And that'll just mean it's slightly earlier. And yeah, it's just a simple way of saying she'll get more meter gauge um, a lot more easily throughout the round. So more meter is always good, especially for Shinobu, who was 
is very known to be a meter hungry character for all of her pressure and combos consume a lot of a lot of a lot of meter so getting more of it is really good increase the damage dealt by her rising thrust her guard special and it cannot be cancelled with the dodge when it hits so basically now she can dash cancel her poison thing which used to be just kind of a really questionably good combo ender people used to end their combos with it because it would just apply poison not do too much immediate damage at all now it now thankfully they did actually increase the damage we'll see how much that is by but now it does a decent amount of damage applies poison and you can actually use it to extend your combos and i imagine you can extend it into an aerial combo because it puts the opponent in the air so that might be one of her best ways of extending combos now which is actually one of the biggest changes in this patch, like it'll actually change how she plays the game and how she goes for combos, where none of the changes we, that we've seen already have actually changed how the character will play. It just changes some of the effects of when you do something, it'll be slightly better or slightly worse. She actually gets a change of change. <laughs> well, you change what you're going to do. I don't know how to say that. Also increase the amount of support gates. Uh... Charges when she lands her support skill. Yeah, okay, whatever. When you use her as a support, maybe she doesn't get... Oh no, it increases when she lands it. Okay, so she's slightly better as a support, which kind of... I don't know. It's confusing. Wasn't she already a really popular support skill, at least before characters like Tengen and stuff came out? So now she's just slightly better. Maybe they really want people to use her as a support. But yeah, let's test. This is the one I feel like testing. Okay, so... We're in training mode. Usually her combos would be something like this, like or go into some attacks, go into this, do 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 do, and then something end with that, and then you get the poison. So let's see how much damage this actually. Oh, okay, that is a noticeable extra amount of damage. We can actually put the um damage indicator on. Where is that? Display damage details. Oh, 839 instant damage. Do you know how much this used to do? I think this used to do 100 damage or even 80 damage. So now, like, it's doing eight times as much damage as it used to do at the end of a combo. Now it actually is a damaging combo ender. How much does something like this do? Yeah, that all together does 400 damage. This does 400 damage. So this is actually her most damaging combo ender now. It actually does, like, it used to be kind of technically maybe her best combo ender because it added poison, but now it does 800 damage. Plus, if you look at the poison applied, you can see that the amount of poison is actually equal to, if not slightly greater than the amount of red damage it dealt. So this is going to be dealing over 16,000, uh, sorry, 1,600 damage as a combo ender, putting it kind of on par with characters like Rengoku who have really, really wild um, combo enders that do like 2000 damage. And also I did just realize that this doesn't do 400 damage, this does 12,000 and I was reading in the wrong spot. But still, this doing 800 um, is on par with the other one. This one still does more, but if you combine the poison, this one certainly does more. And now if we combine the facts with the other change that not only does more instant damage and now is actually just really damaging in total, but now it can also extend combos with either a dash or like a, you can either do a dash cancel or a sidestep cancel after it, which is really, really cool. And I imagine for a character like Shinobu, who really benefits from aerial combos, like she used to really like stuff like this because she can get free dash in super easily off of her aerial combos. Now she'll be able to do that kind of stuff a lot more consistently. So I'm just, you know, hit confirming some attacks. I guess I can like sidestep, do something like this. And maybe if I sidestep towards the opponent, it'll work a little better. Maybe not. That's a little disappointing. Oh no. It does seem to work if I just do it fast enough and in the right direction. Okay, and I think I need to do that attack a little early. That's a little weird how we're so low to the ground that it kind of whiffs like that. Is that even possible? I hope this works. Oh no. Did they see what I was planning and they said, no, you cannot do that. Just do normal combos, you weirdo. 
I guess if you do normal combos, you know, do stuff like this. Button, button, button. Da 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 da. Into some kind of combo window. Or actually, you're probably gonna do something like this. Wait, no. That, get a dash in. And then if you weren't beside the wall, that would do more damage and end properly. Do something like that. Or actually, no, you're probably going to use this as a combo ender. Wait, I just... Give me a moment. I want to lab to see if the combo that I want to do actually works. We got it. Okay, so it seems to work most consistently if you, after you get your your spike, if you just do a sidestep and kind of have it a little bit later. Um, so yeah, you do your guard special and then you cancel it into a sidestep, you know, your really floaty sidestep in the air. But you don't like instantly go into attack like this. You kind of just wait a bit because you're both in the air floating around for a little bit. Do a little bit late and then it seems like you can get it a lot more easily, yeah. Cool. So that means that she can probably have some pretty... Oh, I don't think I messed it up. Oh no. Yeah, some easy low low meter combos because also you can tell that the, the meter regen buff really applies to her cancels. So as you can see, look how quickly I'm rebuilding my meter as soon as I do a dash cancel in my combo. So it seems like she'll want to use dash cancels after her special moves a lot. Because it, like, starts building back meter instantly. And, like, now this combo that was technically two bars is basically zero because of how quickly it builds back. So if I do this kind of stuff early in my combo, um, or a sidestep cancel... ...and do a combo that actually works, it will, it's a lot cheaper. And if I do an actual combo ender... Yeah, that's a Shinobu's actually getting pretty decent chunky damage on her own. She used to be able to get damage if he, she used like a Nezuko support or something in combination with her poison. But even that amount of damage there for a simple BNB combo that I just labbed and is really not meter expensive at all is pretty good. Now she gets like actual average damage with normal combos, which is not something she was able to get before. So that's really, really cool. Getting these kind of loops, actually, that could even be really cool as a um, like a, a reset if you somehow mess this up, and then you just go for a grab. That could be kind of cool, but yeah, I'm sure there are some more optimal combos you can go for here. Like, imagine if I went for a throw there; that could be kind of cool mix. But yeah, I don't remember what is optimal at all. This is really cool stuff. Giving characters new combo paths is always really exciting to me. And although <laughs> I'm really flopping these combos, there's potential there. See, that's decent damage, and you can either take that hard knockdown and, like, fully rebuild your meter, or you could um, do another... Yeah, I really have to delay the... This attack here. I can do this. Yeah, look, that is solid damage for Shinobu. Look at that, guys. And then that wasn't like a full meter drain. It did cost me a little bit, but it's a nice knock away. And I built it back really fast. So that's almost a 50% combo. Nice. This is a good bust for Shinobu. Lucky Shinobu. And for Rinkoku, pretty boring. Just more damage from his throw. Which I guess is cool. He didn't really have the greatest throw. It doesn't reach particularly far or anything. And, you know, he's really strong when he gets an actual hit. But now I guess he's just a little bit stronger when 
he's, you know, trying to mix up the opponent and goes for a throw, it'll just do a little bit more damage. But really, not too big of a change. But a welcome one. Now Murata is guard special, his cheer just is better, builds more support gauge. So let's spend our support gauge and see how much so that actually is. So now if I'm cheering... Oh yeah. Whoa. One cheer builds up back more than a whole support gauge. Okay, that's actually kind of crazy. So now if I'm doing some kind of combo, and I use some kind of support as a combo extender, maybe Entertainment Tanjiro is not the best example, but if I'm doing something like then it was a super long combo, and I can cancel- Hey, I meant to do the tilt one. I can use supports in my combos, still get a knockdown, and I actually end up building more support gauge than I had. So if Tanjiro's already lost some of it, and I use him in a combo... If I did the hard knockdown version of Tanjiro, I actually end up with more support gauge than I did before I started the combo. So that's actually really interesting. Now, his gimmick... Okay, I keep meaning to do the tilt version of Tanjiro's thing, so pretend there's a long hard knockdown, but see, I build back all of my meter basically from zero when I use Tanjiro in my combo. So it means that you can use supports in combos a lot more consistently. And when I am like use them in neutral and throw them around, if I think the opponent's going to get hit by it, I can just throw it out. And not only do I like build it back, I build it back in excess. Like I build back more than a whole bar, so that's really powerful. Cool. Okay. Good job, Murata. Having more support gauge just means you can abuse the powerful supports that are already very abusable, and you can just break out of combos more. So Murata... He's living, living good. Nice stuff. Now for entertainment version of Tanjiro, he increased the minimum damage dealt when landing skill 3, his DP, as part of a combo. So this just means that no matter how much scaling is in your combo, uh, this move will deal more damage than it used to before. So it was already kind of good as a combo ender, especially when you consider how his combos work, where he likes to just, you know, do simple stuff like this. Okay, I don't remember exactly clearly. It's been a few months since I've played again. Okay, clearly I have no recollection of anything. But I'm pretty sure there was combos. Oh yeah, maybe it's this. Where you have like these fire wheels and you have no time left in your combo counter, but then you use this. And it does a nice extra chunk of damage. And now it's just saying that it's just going to do even more damage when you use it in this situation. So it doesn't do more damage like when you hit it normally, but when you're doing a combo where, you know, all your attacks start doing less damage when they're in combos, this will do more damage than it usually does. So it's just going to be a nice extra chunk of damage at the end of your combos. So extra damage is always good. Okay, now Tengen, he got increased throw damage and shorten recovery on his DP and we'll push the opponent further back. Okay, so we've got kind of Rengoku change and Water Tanjiro change. Uh, safer DP and more damage on his throw. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, so the throw. Okay, not a huge amount of extra damage, or at least not a noticeable amount for me. Was it really that low of damage that now this is extra? Huh. And his DP, let's test it on whiff first actually. Oh, okay, that is a significant decrease. This thing used to have a wild amount of recovery. Kind of like, yeah, DPs are meant to be unsafe, but it was an excessive amount of recovery. It would kind of be, let me replicate what it would have looked like before. I accidentally do a DP in neutral, I would be, now I can block. Like, you used to have to wait full on seconds before you could block from this thing. But now, it seems like, you know, after the attack is done, there's a little bit of recovery and then you can block, just as DPs should be. And on guard, let's see how much this pushback is. Okay, it's not, doesn't seem like it's Sabito level, but it is certainly a further pushback. It seems pretty similar to what a Tanjiro is actually. So a regular attack is not going to be able to hit, but a tilt attack probably will be able to, yeah. So it's certainly still going to be able to be pretty easily punished. Uh, unlike Sabito's, who's now is actually going to be a little bit questionable. Tengen's 
is just not as ridiculously minus. It used to be just profoundly minus. Now there's a chance that you might survive. Just a little bit of whisper of hope. And if you do accidentally whiff it in neutral, you have a slight bit of chance that you won't completely die. Because before, like, it was no question. The opponent could be walking around, jumping something. They don't even need to react. They'll be like, oh, and you're still standing there. And then they dash in and punish you. Like, three seconds later, it was crazy. So, yeah. Slight buffs for Tengen, but nothing crazy. And Entertainment District Zenitsu, he got a faster dash speed. So now he's probably on par with his regular Zenitsu self. He got, yeah, the same damage as regular Zenitsu did, where it has more damage, but... Increased recovery time for when you whiff it, so it just is more like a normal throw. And reduced damage dealt by skill 1. So now he's just going to overall have slightly less damage in his extremely damaging combos, which, you know, kind of makes sense. Normalize it. He did have some pretty crazy damage. I don't remember exactly what the combos were, but there was some some wild stuff where he did tons of damage. Now his throw, just like regular uh, Zenitsu, does actually have some recovery. But don't worry, it still works great on hit for building back tons and tons of meter with that super long knockdown. And what was the other thing? Oh yeah, now he's a fast walker. Oh no, he's got a faster dash. So now I guess he's just as fast as his regular self, which is lovely because that's one of his biggest strengths. Okay, and the final changes for a Slayer character is to Entertainment Inosuke. And they made it easier to break the opponent's guard when you used the chase dash and increased his throw damage. Which are both pretty crazy changes because they buffed things that he was already really good at. Those being breaking the opponent's guard and throwing the opponent when they're guarding. So I, the chase dash, I'm not sure, but I believe this will refer to... Oh no, his second skill is called slice. So is chase dash literally just when he runs at you? Oh, yeah, what? So his chase dash does more guard damage? Did it used to do... I thought they were all default for all characters. It did about, like, 30% or something. So does his do more than normal now? Okay, it breaks in three, but I'm pretty sure everyone breaks in three. Two. Th oh, no. So maybe I think... Yeah. I thought everyone was default and they did, like, 25% damage or anything, which seems like is the case for regular Zenitsu, but... Inosuke, does he deal like 30% now? Oh no. He still has to break in 4 as well, so maybe he adds slightly less. Anyways. I guess he'll slightly more easily be able to break the opponent's guard when he uses a dash in. Whatever. And what was the other change? Increased throw damage. Oh yeah. That's pretty good. Especially when you consider that was one of his biggest strengths, is that he's got like guaranteed throws. After his crazy plus unblock stuff, now, oh yeah, that is gonna, that is gonna add up a lot. So basically, anytime he touches you, he's gonna be doing like 15% damage with all that. Oh, yeah, that's gonna be rough. And then anytime he gets a hit, he does get these big juicy combos. And because you're blocking, when you get hit by, when you get by, the thing that's kind of good about grab mix-ups, instead of just breaking your guard things, where like char some characters are really good at, you know, breaking your guard super easily and going for things, is the thing is that Inosuke, he loves when the opponent is blocking because he's got all this mix-up and stuff and he does whittle down the guard gauge, but often he'll just go for a throw mix-up before he gets the chance to do that and or to actually break their guard. So he gets all of this mix-up and stuff while the opponent's guard gauge is red and then like the next time he gets a hit he just instantly breaks their guard gauge and <clears throat> so he kind of combines being able to break their guard with with the um the throw mix-ups and they kind of compound to be even better because he gets the throw mix-ups while making the guard break mix-up even more scary because it keeps being red for so long so yeah not too many changes for entertainment inosuke but ultimately ones that play really well into the game plan he already wants to play. And that brings us to the conclusion of all of the changes for the Slayer characters in the, this April balance patch of Hinokami Chronicles. And ultimately, oh, I will do the demons in a separate video, don't worry, I'm not just ignoring them. But uh, ultimately, I think 
Although the balance patch is lovely, <clears throat> and I love the prospect of getting balance patch for the game, I can't believe this was like a whole month ago and I didn't even know <laughs> until like three days ago. But um, yeah, it's cool that we got a balance patch. I'm just a slight bit disappointed that it's not the balance patch that I was hoping for or wishing for. Like there are some some changes. There it is technically changes to balance, like DPs being slightly safer, some throws having more recovery, slight changes on damage for some characters or or safety. But the only thing that is like an interesting balance patch change is like to um where is she? Is to Shinobu where she gets like these new combo routes and more damage off of her combo ender. Like, that'll actually change how she plays. And maybe with Murata, there can be some cool things with supports now that he builds so much support gauge. But out of these changes, nothing really makes too much of a difference to the actual way the game is played. And there are no changes that address, like, fundamental problems that people really don't like about the game. Which is a little unfortunate, but to be a little less of a downer, I am just glad that there was a balance patch at all. So, yeah. I'm equally disappointed and excited by this patch. So let me know what your opinions are or your thoughts are on this patch. And if you're excited or disappointed, let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.